What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 biggest wrestling hometown pops ever by What Culture Wrestling. Um, it's always cool when a wrestler is able to go back to their hometown, born and raised, and they get that standing ovation or they get that pop from the crowd just knowing that they're from that city it's always a good time always a good moment even heels get it and sometimes they gotta you know kind of play into it because it's like you know it's it's sometimes hard to ignore that love and adulation from the fans within that city so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel and we're gonna get right into this one man it's one of the most important things in wrestling. For bookers and writers, it can show them how their work is being received, and for performers, it's the adulation that they strive for. Naturally, Three the chances minutes. of a star getting Three an even better crowd reaction is a matter Man, of timing. Pairing that. a key storyline moment that, with the uh, perfect Spider location movie. creates atmospheres that transcend most others. I'm CypherWhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 biggest wrestling hometown pops ever. Number 10, Trish Stratus in Toronto, Unforgiven mm. 2006. You don't get a memorable pop without a strong emotion behind it. The reaction mm -hmm. of a live crowd is the greatest demonstration of emotional investment in this soap opera with super kicks and spandex. Trish Stratus is quite rightfully lauded as one of the most important women in sports entertainment history, and as such, she had a connection with the WWE audience. Mm -hmm. In August 2006, longtime rival Lita Kayfabe leaked Stratus' intentions to retire, which Stratus confirmed. The time was right for Trish, as in the next month, the WWE were heading to Canada for the Unforgiven pay per view. There, Trish and Lita had their final showdown for the women's championship. Whilst they only had 11 minutes with which to work, the Toronto crowd was invested throughout. Ebbing and flowing, the bout ended with Trish cinching in a sharpshooter, prompting certainly the loudest cheer during a women's match <laughs> to that point. Stratus left Toronto and the WWE for the time being, claiming the prize for the seventh time, and fans were truly stratified. Number 9, John Beautiful Cena moment. in Boston, Survivor Series 2008. Cena's ability to routinely come back from devastating injuries in half the predicted time or less is legendary. Yeah. The first time this occurred was October 2007 with a torn pectoral muscle. Cena had been predicted to be out for six months to a year, returning instead in three months at the Royal Rumble Which to the sound insane. of Jaws hitting the floor. In August of 2008, just, just that moment him turning back at the Royal Rumble so quick was... Even the crowd, you know, at that point, the crowd was mixed with John Cena. But when he returned, the crowd went crazy. The pop he got when his music hit, Jim Ross selling it. Like, just everybody in the ring stopping what they're doing. Like, wait, what? How? You were supposed to be gone for like a half a year. How are you back in three months? What? Tina was put on the shelf with a herniated disc. Again, WWE statement said that he'd be out of action for a year, so naturally he was back in less than three months at Survivor Series. Which is Cena insane. had already spent a few years dividing fans as he was catapulted into the position of the face of the brand. Here, however, in front of the red hot Boston crowd, he was given a superhero's welcome. Mm -hmm. Survivor Series 2008 is remembered as an extremely lackluster event, but the highlight is certainly the adulation of the crowd for the super athlete winning his first ever World Heavyweight Championship. Number 8, Taz in New York City, mm. Royal Rumble 2000. As the first man to instigate a tap out in wrestling, the creator of the Extreme Championship Wrestling logo and a wrestler of lesser stature in the era of giants, Taz truly has left his mark on the business. It's these things and his long-serving loyalty to Paul Heyman's counterculture that made his mm -hmm. debut elsewhere such a big deal. Taz began his career in ECW before it was extreme under the original banner of East and championship wrestling. Over the course of 13 years, he became a fixture of the show, rising to the top of the card before finally looking for greener pastures at the turn of the millennium. In December 99, teasers of Taz's incoming to WWE were dropped through his trademark orange lighting and his logo appearing on the Tron. Royal Rumble in 2000 emanated from Madison Square Garden, just mm -hmm. 30 minutes away from his home of Red Hook, Brooklyn. Here he filled the unannounced opponent slot for the oblivious heel Kurt Angle to a roaring crowd that got even louder when he tore the towel off of his head to stare down the Olympic gold medalist. <laughs> the match was short, vicious, and shocking as the human suplex machine ended Angle's thus far undefeated streak in front of an elated home crowd. Number 7, Great Shawn moment. Michaels in Classic San Antonio, moment. Royal Rumble 1997. Michael's time with the belt in 1996 wasn't as big of a success as the WWE hoped. As such, Vince and company decided to have their top babyface drop the belt to Psycho Sid. This way, he could return once more to the scrappy underdog role and eventually reclaim 
name it. To make this even more special, this redemption would occur at the Royal Rumble in Michael's home of San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio showed up in their droves with a reported attendance of 60,000 fans Damn. that were more than ready to lose their minds for the Jeez. heartbreak kid. The Hebner special super slow-mo count created a pregnant tension that released a cacophony of crowd noise when Michael <laughs> scored the three counts. Number six, Sami Zayn in Montreal. Oh. Smackdown 20. This, bruh, man, just, just, ah, I, I don't even have words for it. That SmackDown was ridiculous. Just ridiculous how white hot at that point Sami Zayn was. It, it, I, my words will never do it justice. Just go watch it. Just go watch a snippet. Of Sami Zayn coming out there. He doesn't even have to. He barely had to say anything. Just Sami Zayn being out there. The crowd just went crazy. It was beautiful. 2023. When Sami Zayn answered John Cena's United States title open challenge in 2015 in his home province, the ovation was massive. Furthermore, Zayn put in an incredible showing mm -hmm. despite blowing out his shoulder soaking in the atmosphere before the bell. Sadly, in the years since then, his WWE career has tended to be rather up and down as it can be in the company's mid-card. However, starting from April 2022, Zayn began to align himself with Roman Reigns in the bloodline, bringing us eventually mm -hmm. to our most recent moment on this list. Sami Zayn on SmackDown in Montreal wasn't a revolutionary moment. This wasn't a debut, a return, or even a great match. He cut a simple promo that is after five minutes of constant crowd noise. Beautiful. However, it's in the wider context. Just a few weeks previous, Zayn had finally turned on his supposed allies by intervening on their attack on Kevin Owens, putting the target on himself. In the weeks leading up to this moment, he had minimal TV time, but the year-long story was so well built that it was all anyone could talk about. Back. As such, walking out in front of a raucous Montreal crowd just 24 hours before Elimination Chamber and the biggest match of his career against Roman Reigns, Zayn was vindicated. For a moment, the underdog from the underground was the hottest commodity in wrestling, and Back. Montreal made sure he felt that way. Number 5, Steve Chef Austin kiss. in Houston, Beautiful WrestleMania moment. 17. Oh. Yeah, I know how I feel about this one. <laughs> Oh, this is so great. This is one of my favorite WrestleMania moments of all time. Y'all know how I feel about this one. I don't even... If you know me, you've watched this channel for long enough, you already know what's up. I ain't gotta say nothing, bro. When talking about huge crowd reactions, something would be amiss without the mention of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin absolutely wasn't the only person of his era with a sort of front bumper at the start of his music, but the sound of glass shattering is so iconic. It yep. is surely the reason almost all theme songs today in WWE start with something designed to immediately generate a reaction. Because, quite simply, that sound routinely sent shockwaves throughout audiences, uh -huh. with Austin's biggest hometown reaction coming at WrestleMania 17. As he stepped out for the night's main event, Austin's music was drowned out by the hometown Houston crowd reacting to the sound of breaking glass. The midpoint of the Rock and Austin WrestleMania trilogy is often called the best, but it's not just about match quality. The coming together of the two biggest stars in the world and the yep. undeniably perfect pairing with Limp Bizkit's My Way video package made this the culmination of an era. Fans mm -hmm. in the Astrodome audibly relished their part to play in wrestling history. Facts. Number 4, CM Punk, Money in the Bank 2011. Of course this had to be on the list. If this wasn't on the list, this, this would be a crime. That, that, <laughs> I don't think we'll ever see or hear that type of reception like we did in Money in the Bank 2011. Even though he got a massive pop when he came back to wrestling in AEW, that arena, there was not, it was just straight CM Punk or nothing. It didn't matter. They were chanting CM Punk the entire night. I just, it's the pay per view that brought me back to, to wrestling. And I ain't gonna lie to you, I love it. Seven. Ever since the WWE kicked off the Attitude Era and gave themselves a counterculture slant, it's been hard to come back from. As such, fans who stick with the sport are also drawn to underdogs, dark horses, and alternatives. So when the company cements a clean-cut babyface like John Cena as their pride and joy, it stars like CM Punk who find themselves as the voice of the voiceless. Mm -hmm. This was the perfect backdrop to the Summer of Punk 2011, a storyline which saw the Second City Saint cut through the pristine PG product of WWE to work shoot 
constitute a break in the story. Punk threatened to win the company's top prize and walk out the door with it, capturing the imagination of fans who were disillusioned with WWE's tired product. Best of all, he would do this in front of his home crowd of Chicago, who were 100% on Punk's side. Right. This blurred the line of reality further and added an atmosphere that has made the match one of the best of its decade. The roar of the crowd from his first steps onto the stage to him skirting over the barricade to leave never lets up, exploding like a grenade when their oh, hero man. claimed the belt. Number so three, beautiful. the British Bulldog in London, SummerSlam 1992. Mm -hmm. The United Kingdom is a country one. with a starving wrestling audience who often know how to make their presence felt. Across the late 90s and early 2000s, UK fans were positively spoiled by today's standards with annual or even twice annual WWE pay-per-view events. As such, many UK fans have fond memories of the likes of Rebellion and the Crime Against English Dictionaries Everywhere, Insurrection. <laughs> However, SummerSlam 1992 remains the high point of the company's events in Old Blighty. Like a domino effect, the WWE's growing popularity in the UK led to moving the event from the US to London. In turn, the excitement of the promotion Ocean's first major event outside of North America meant mm -hmm. a huge crowd all too keen to fill out Wembley Stadium. And at the top of the card, Davey Boy Smith competed for the Intercontinental Championship. From Bulldog's entrance to the finish, the capacity crowd got hotter and hotter throughout a match that is the personal favourite of both workers and thousands of fans. Mm -hmm. When the three counts finally came, Wembley erupted. Brilliantly, Smith's music doesn't play, instead his victory is marked with one of the loudest pops in WWE history. Number two, the Heart Foundation in Calgary, in your house Canadian stampede. It's one thing to get deafening cheers as an over babyface, but to get one of the biggest positive reactions of the year as a heel is something else entirely. Mm -hmm. WrestleMania 13 famously featured almost certainly the greatest double turn in the business. It yep. swapped the alignment of Stone Cold, allowing him to begin his ascent to the top, and Bret Hart, whose act needed a refresh. Later that year, the hitman adopted an anti-American persona as part of the Hart Foundation stable. Every week, Hart would talk smack about the United States and bathe in the booze. However, he was still and would always be Canada's golden boy and yeah. the WWE knew it. So when In Your House Canadian Stampede rolled around, they lent into it. A video package starts the event discussing the company's Shades of Grey characters and the paradox this show would represent. Embraced as hometown heroes, every member of the Hart Foundation, Brett, Owen, Neidhart, Davey Boy and Pillman was met with main eventer level cheers. The Hitman's entrance in particular was deafening and and it continued into the five versus five tag match again. Which makes sense because, you know, you're back at home. Even if you're a heel, we've seen it with Edge. When he was facing John Cena, I believe it was at Unforgiven. It was in his hometown in Toronto. He was the heel. John Cena was the baby face, but it didn't matter. They all wanted Edge to win. Unfortunately, he didn't win that match. But it just proves that when... The heel comes home, it doesn't matter. Things switch at that point. Just uh, even recently, if you guys remember when MJF went home, it was like, I think it was last year, he was feuding with CM Punk, and he went home back to, I believe he's from Rhode Island or whatever. When he been, went home, anytime he's in Rhode Island, it doesn't matter. He's going to be cheered. There's nothing that they can he can say or do that will make the crowd just boo him like that. So when he went home, and then the roles kind of switched. CM Punk was booed heavily, but it just is, it happens. There's nothing you can do except play into it, so against various American superstars. Brett never badmouthed his home country, and this, and Calgary in particular being the home of the hearts, meant that the crowd had no reason not to cheer so loud that the hard cam shook. And number That's one, awesome. CM Punk in Chicago, AW Rampage, you the know first what? dance. There are few wrestlers quite so evenly divisive as CM Punk. On the one hand, some fans simply can't see the appeal of the man's work and style, and are turned off by his demeanor that can sometimes charitably be described as sour. But uh -huh. those that love him, him, love him. And again, Chicago has made their devotion to the voice of the voice that's known to that such a, a degree moment. that it was impossible not to include two specific moments on this list. After spectacularly burning his bridges with WWE and going into relative hiding, it felt like a CM Punk return would feasibly never happen. In 2021, the rumor mill began to turn, and even as AEW named an August edition of Rampage the first dance, itself a Chicago reference to spell things out, there was still a certain degree of apprehension that it was actually happening. 
Cue a pop that was one part excitement and one part collective sigh of relief as the second city saint finally mm -hmm. walked onto the ramp. An emotional punk and an equally emotional home crowd made that moment something incredibly special. It felt like time stopped as the audience hung on his every word. Though great. the future of the Chicago native is still a mystery, his return to wrestling has become one of the most unifying moments in history. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought. Big facts. Me personally, I do love that moment. I think that's a moment that will always stand the test of time in wrestling history. But me personally, just because of the impact it had on me getting back into wrestling and catching that first pay-per-view, getting back into wrestling, Money in the Bank 2011, and just that atmosphere, that entire night, for me, it it's, it's higher up on the list. If I had to compare CM Punk Money in the Bank 2011 to pair to CM Punk coming back to wrestling, they're both high up there. It's just, I think, even though that arena was, you know, a little bit smaller, they're, they're bro, they were just electric. You had grown men crying. It was a beautiful moment. Beautiful moment. But CM Punk winning the WWE Championship, the atmosphere, the match itself, and him walking out as the champion, the crowd went crazy. It was, ah. Oh. Oh man, they're both legendary moments. So I want to know. I'm gonna ask y'all this. Comment down below. Let me know which moment, CM Punk moment, crowd pop moment, did you guys enjoy the most? Was it Money in the Bank 2011? The poppy got there, or was it when he returned back to wrestling on AEW Rampage? The pop that he got there. Me personally, I'm gonna go with 2011 because it just it just has a special place in my heart, but that is a close second, very close second, only because seeing him come back to wrestling was a beautiful thing as well. I want to know y'all opinion. You know what I'm saying? I know some of y'all don't like CM Punk, for the, but those who are fans of CM Punk, let me know which one made you get the feels more. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on Channel Road to 150K, and I'm still going to speed the YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all giving me. See you on the next one. Peace.